Richlets, and welcome to the final week of 2020. So you may have noticed that there were no videos last week, and uh, there are a lot of reasons for that, but the primary ones are um, I was sick and my dad died. So um, it's been kind of a rough week. Um, Pro tip, stay hydrated even when you're in a lot of pain because it will really mess up your system. Um, it will send you into what looks like liver failure. Um, so fortunately, I have been able to hydrate and, uh, you know, do well with that and, uh, and all of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to finish the mincemeat tarts that we started two weeks ago with mincemeat that I made because that's what you use for mincemeat part tarts. Um, so we're going to do, um, we're going to do the crusts and everything and show you how to put it all together and, and go from there. So for this, you will need a cup and a quarter of almond flour, five tablespoons of butter, then two tablespoons each of coconut flour, gluten-free all-purpose flour, swerve sweetener or your preferred sweetener of choice, and arrowroot starch, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of xanthan gum. So, um, and you will eventually need two to four tablespoons of ice water as well, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. You want a mini muffin tray that contains 24 spaces because that's what you're going to put your tarts into. There's also a lot of downtime in this recipe because you have to freeze your uh, tart tartlets, your tart shells, once you've got them rolled out, cut out, and put into your tray, you're going to freeze those for about an hour, and then, then we get to fill them with the mincemeat and bake them. So, let's go ahead and get everything reframed so we can get the mixer out and start a making. Alrighty, so um, what I'm gonna do, so the recipe actually calls for using a food processor, but as we have established, mine is somewhere in storage. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand mix this uh, for the first part, and then I'm gonna move it over to the mixer, but I'm not gonna show that part because the mixer's really loud. So I'm gonna tell you what to do instead. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our almond flour here and get everything in there. And uh, you wanna break up the clumps as much as you can. And then you're just gonna start adding your other um, dry ingredients here and uh, whisking them in or mixing them in, pulsing them in if you're using a food processor. Arrowroot. Um, sugar. I mean, on the plus side of all of this illness and everything, um, I've, I've hit my goal weight. I do not recommend doing it the way I did though, because not eating food or eating food and then regurgitating it is not the best diet plan in the world. So at this point, we have all of our dry ingredients mixed together. And what you're gonna do, if you're using a food processor, you're going to slowly add your butter, which you're gonna wanna cube, it should be softened. You're gonna wanna cube this and it says to sprinkle it into your mixture while you're pulsing. Um, and then once it forms up the crumbs, you're going to start adding anywhere from one to four tablespoons or however much you need of ice water to make it into a dough. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this onto my KitchenAid and get everything going with that and then uh, we'll be back to roll it out and go from there. All right, so I used about two tablespoons of ice water when I was doing my dough. Um, my dough is not very sticky, so um, I just kind of didn't bother putting down extra almond flour. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll this out in all directions into a roughly 13 inch circle. I'm using my 1 8 inch rolling pin because I suspect that's about the size it's gonna need to be. Remember, you're wanting to make approximately 24 tartlets out of this. So, um, and they're gonna be about two and a half inch, two and a half inches that you're cutting, two and a half inch circles that you're cutting out of this. This is the thrilling content you come to my channel for. I know it. So do me a favor this, uh, during 2021 here that we're coming up on. Wear your masks, wash your hands, remain socially distant. I know that there's a vaccine that is being rolled out. Please get it if you can, but still remain socially distant and wear your masks and act responsibly um, because you never know whose father you might infect. Um, my dad died of COVID and um, My brother's taking it really hard. I'm sure my sister and I will fall apart at the funeral, but uh, you know, wear your masks. Um, my mom also is recovering from COVID. So, you know, there's that. Alrighty. I'm actually doing well in making this into a circle. I'm impressed with myself. Might have used a bit too much water. It's a, it's a bit moister than it should be, but that's all right. We're not fancy here. So once you get this rolled out into a roughly 13 inch circle, mine's more like an oblong. It's roughly 13 inches. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your two and a half inch circle cutter and you're just gonna start cutting circles out of your out of your dough. And once you get all of the circles cut into your dough, you're going to take up the scraps, roll it out again, lather, rinse, repeat until you've got about 24 24 discs. And uh, then we'll be back and show you what to do with them. All right, so we didn't get 24 out of these. Um, we ended up having to re-roll the first set that we did, uh, you want to make it, rather than going by a 13 inch diameter circle, go by an eighth of an inch thick. That's what you're going to want. So um, what you're going to do is you're then going to gently, because this is already tearing, the dough is very, very warm. So you kind of have to keep that in mind as you're doing stuff. You want to form this, <sighs> not that one. You want to form this to the, um, to the tin that you're putting it into here and you're going to prick the bottom or rip it. This is why I don't make these things. Okay, so like magic happened between the last take and what you're going to see next. Just, just believe that magic happened because um, I'm not fancy and I don't do tartlets pretty much ever. So I um, had to have cameraman Ken do it. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to figure out how to do it so they don't tear apart completely. Um, I think cameraman Ken used the bottom of a shot glass that we have to mold it so that it would at least, you know, break apart uniformly and then just kind of push it back together and, you know, scoot it up around the sides. And then you need to take a fork and prick the bottom of the of the tartlet. And then you stick them in the freezer for an hour. So, um, since I have an hour, I'm gonna eat some tasty, tasty wings that cameraman Ken made earlier. They are garlic, Parmesan, and General Sows. So I'm 
very excited and uh, very hungry. All right, so we have taken our uh, tartlets out of the freezer. You wanna freeze them for about an hour um, at least. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and fill these. Now the recipe says to use two tablespoons of your uh, mincemeat fill filling. However, I don't think two tablespoons are gonna fit in here. So we're just gonna kind of fill it till it's filled. If you actually were able to make um, 24 of these tart things, then you will use one cup of your mincemeat filling. Um, obviously we made 12, so we are just going to fill this. Oh yeah, you wanna set your oven to 325. Since my oven just alerted me that it was at temperature. This is the thrilling content you're here to see. Thrilling, thrilling. But hey, at least we're finishing these. So we still have the um, hard sauce in the fridge um, from two weeks ago when I made it. Oh, by the way, you do want to work with your um, mincemeat while it's cool. Um, however, if you have to let it sit as long as I did, you will need to heat it up because it does um, become a very gelatinous, uh, hard, kind of like coconut oil at room temperature, hard. Um, so uh, cameraman can put it into a uh, hot water bath and let it go just until it was able to be worked as in, you know, scooped out and manipulated and such. And uh, that's where we are. That might be a little much for this one. Put that in there. Alrighty. I don't think I've ever actually had mincemeat. I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe I did probably check the uh, video in which we make the mincemeat because I probably say in that if I have or not and what I thought of it. But uh, that was two weeks ago when I was still a bit delirious. His funny thing about dehydration, it affects your brain. Um, it also affects your liver and your kidneys, pancreas, stomach. Pretty much your vital organs. Um, Unless I need water. Yeah, zero ten. Do not recommend. So um, yeah. All right. So once we get these filled, then we will go ahead and stick this into a three hundred and twenty-five degree oven. There we go. Three hundred and twenty-five degree oven for eighteen to twenty-two minutes. Once they are bubbly and the um, crust is a nice golden color. Then you take them out and you let them cool in the pan for approximately 20 minutes um, because they're going to be really delicate um, when they're hot as you saw when I was trying to you know manipulate them earlier. Um, if you want to warm them up, then you're gonna have to put them like on a baking sheet and stick them back in the oven for a few minutes um, just, to, just to warm them, just to warm them up. So um, we'll be back. Alrighty, it has been 20 minutes. And uh, that, is what you're going for as far as uh, color and bubbliness and things of that nature. So we're gonna let this cool in this pan for 20 minutes and then we'll come back and hopefully our hard sauce has uh, become less uh, Less, less, less hard, like, you know, 
this should be the consistency of like whipped cream. So, um, but again, we made this two weeks ago. It's been in the refrigerator ever since. And uh, so we'll just need to warm this up a bit and that way we can serve it just a small dollop on top of the mint tarts. So we'll be back in a little bit and uh, plate it and I guess taste it and go from there. Alrighty, we are back. So these have cooled for about 20 minutes or so and we have transformed our hard sauce into less of a hard, physically hard thing. So go ahead and see how this is. Boozy, which is great. Um, excuse me. So the crust is slightly dry, but that's okay. Um, it's very good. And I'm actually really happy that we finally got a chance to complete this entire video. So hopefully you like this video. Um, if you did go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't hit the dislike button, that's fine. Just leave me a comment either way. Let me know how you have had mince meat in the past. If you've had them as tartlets, if you've had them as like full pies, tarts, empanadas, I don't know. Um, let me know. Apparently you can use hard sauce for a bunch of different things I was learning this evening. So um, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and you have hit the um, notification bell so you know when my videos are coming out. Again, I apologize for not having any last week. I was actually really disappointed because I had something really fun planned for Christmas Eve, but I was too sick to do anything. So, such is life. So, uh, we will see you next time with more stuff from Kitchen Witchery and other stuff.